how much food do you eat in a day? How much is too much? How much is too little? That's what I want to touch on today in this moment. How much food should people eat per day? We human beings are of all sizes, heights, statutes. So, what's too much food and what's not enough? If you take a look at the society in which we all live, you're going to notice something profound if you haven't already thought about it. 50 to 60 percent of the population is overweight and or obese. Extremely overweight. There's a reason behind this ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's not just by happenstance, it's not a coincidence that a significant amount of our population is overweight. I'm not talking 5 or 10 pounds. I'm talking 20, 30, 40 pounds or even more. Why all of the weight? Is it uh, because they are misinformed as to how to eat and what to eat? I believe so. I want to share this. When all of us were born, we were not given an instruction book on diet. We were not. We were just simply born into a society that came the way it was. I can't put it any simpler than that. It was already here. So all we did was just copy what we saw. Never questioning or challenging anything. Because we were just uh, products of the environment that we exposed excuse me that we were exposed to and are exposed to so when you look around you see a McDonald's a Wendy's Taco Bell Chick-fil-A Chipotle a steakhouse some some restaurant somewhere on every other corner corner in, in your community or your town do we know what we're being fed how many of you, when you go to a restaurant, you ask to see the chef or the cook and have them give you the ingredients that's in the food that you're consuming or about to? Don't all raise your hand at the same time because I know it doesn't happen that often. It's very rare for most. How is it that we trust? For some reason, we just simply trust that when we go to a restaurant, we're being fed that which is good for us that's a great presumption you just assume that the food that they put on your plate or in your package or bag is edible it's wholesome nutritious when in fact we really don't know but this is the society that we have all grown accustomed to never questioning anything just following the leader I think we need to start questioning what we do especially when it concerns what we put in our bodies don't you when you go grocery shopping the food manufacturers know what you like that's why it's in the store in the first place all of the colors and the beautiful patch packaging and the boxes and the displays and the lights looks good to the eye and we just keep piling it into our carts it's checkout time and if you really survey what you had in that cart about 90 percent of what's in that cart it's not even real food in the first place it's called food stuff right it's like food it's has some semblance to food but it's not really nutritionally dense. A lot of sugar, GMOs, genetically modified organisms, 
a lot of chemicals and toxins, preservatives, all kinds of things that's put in our foods to keep it on the shelf for longer. These are the things that we are consuming. And over a period of time, it builds up in our system. Then we have to go see that man called the doctor. And then he's going to prescribe some stuff for us in, in the form of medication, pharmaceutical drugs, that's going to even cause some more havoc in our bodies down the road. But we're not going to really put two and two together and say, oh, the food that I ate was harming my body or the so-called food was harming my body and so when I have all of this discomfort I go to the doctor and he gives me some pharmaceutical drugs that were made in the laboratory that are going to harm me even more and somewhere down the road he diagnoses me with some form of cancer or disease and then I'm on some more medication did we not put it together that it's all interwoven it's all linked together but when you look at us as a society, and then you look around, you see a whole lot of people that are overweight and obese. From children, four, five, six years old and up, way up in age, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, extremely overweight, can hardly walk up a few steps without panting and having to stop. Something is wrong, people. So, let's get back to the original premise of this video. How much should we eat in a day? So, we are accustomed to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's what we were taught. That's what we came up following. But do you need three meals a day? Answer, no. I have friends that eat one meal per day and they're very healthy. I fundamentally eat one meal per day. I tell you what I eat per day and this is pretty common every day with me and I've said it in time past. First thing in the morning I'll have my green drink. Contained within that green drink are vitamins and minerals, enzymes, nutrition. That's my nutrition for the whole day. I have kale, spinach, spirulina, chlorella, uh, cayenne pepper to move the blood, turmeric, garlic, onion. Uh, there's one more that I put in there, uh, moringa, that's another one, and many, many more herbs to heal and to tonify my system first thing in the morning and sometimes I have other beverages when I get up earlier than I normally do to have that green drink and throughout the day I usually don't eat anything somewhere around the middle part of the day I might have a cup of coffee and maybe a couple cookies because I do like sweets I'm not overly excited about them anymore as I was when I was younger. So, my rule is 90-10. 90% of what I do is healthy. The other 10% is incidental. It's the things that I don't control or that I'm not aware of. I think the 90% of health trumps the 10% of unhealthy practices. Okay, to include my chocolate chip cookies from time to time. But if you're 50-50, you're gambling. Or if you're 90-10, which means that 10% of what you're doing is healthy, and the 90% is unhealthy, guess who's going to win? You're going to end up with cancer. You're going to end up living a very, very short life. My rule again is 90-10, 90% healthy living. And the other 10% is the things that you can't control or your guilty pleasures. So, when you look around and you see obese people, what you're really seeing, even if it's, it's you or people who are extremely overweight, 20, 30 pounds or more, it is because you have never been taught how to properly eat food, 
and combine food. Some things are not supposed to be eaten together. Some things are not supposed to be eaten uh, at a certain time of the day. Some things are not supposed to be eaten at all. That's why we are overweight, not myself, notwithstanding. So, you need to start learning your body. You need to start buying organically grown foods. I know there's some people out there trying to trick us, stamping these uh, certified organic stamps on some of these foods, but that means that you have to do a little bit more homework and work and dive a little bit deeper in your research and find out where you can get supplies of real certified organic foods. There are organic farmers in existence. They're not flooding the planet anymore, but they are there. Do your own due diligence. And stop consuming all of these processed foods, canned, packaged, boxed, and so forth. Start eating fresh, organic foods. Drinking clean, purified, and or distilled in uh, reverse osmosis water as long as it's not your regular tap or municipal water. Start exercising on a regular basis, three to four days a week at least. 30 minutes to an hour or two each session. Tonifying your muscles. Going for brisk walks. Getting on a Stairmaster. Uh, something an elliptical or going jogging. Doing something as opposed to just sitting down, gaining weight, doing nothing and just wasting away. So, how many meals should you eat per day? You can get by with one. You can get by with three small meals. But the problem is, oftentimes when you do that, we don't know what small is. It's a journey, ladies and gentlemen. The question is, have you decided to go on it? The journey to health. Because our society has taught us the opposite. Everywhere there's a fast food restaurant and it's all killing us. It's all right every once in a while if you want to go to a, a nice restaurant with your family. But that shouldn't be your mainstay. That shouldn't be the only thing that you do in your main source of food. Oh, I'm running late for work. Let me stop at McDonald's. That's not good. It's not real food. It's not. There's no nutritional value in any of it. Nutrition does what? It sustains the human body. You need your minerals. You need your vitamins. You need your protein. You need all of those essential elements that keep us alive, vibrant, and moving. Anything that doesn't do that should not be a part of our diets. That's it and that's all. So, the most important thing before I close is this. Make sure you get your nutrition out of your food in a day. It's not about volume, how large the food amount is, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's about the quality and the value of what you're putting in your body, the nutrition. That's it. And that's all. And I'm Brother Teacher. So long.